what the fuck was that? So where we left off, we were in a uh, pawn, pawn broker shop place. And we met Miss Lestrade in the shop. So we rustled her jimmies a little bit. She's not too pleased with us. <laughs> she kicked Sherlock Holmes out of the store. So now we're talking with her to see what's up. All right, so why are you a customer, huh? Somehow, I didn't really think you were the sort of person who'd use a pawnbroker, Miss Lestrade. Yeah, well, I am, all right. I'm a Londoner just like everyone else. That a problem, is it? Uh, no, no, not at all. It's just that, well... Oh, I get it. I know what you're thinking. That thing probably don't even... Don't even belong to her. Probably got it on the dive <laughs> didn't she dude her dialect makes me stutter harder <laughs> yeah i can see it written all over your ch chevy chase well i might have been thinking something along those lines you're not going to deny it mr naruho though i mean at least he's honest all right then i'm just going to come out and ask you straight do you pawn things that you steal from other people? Well, um, I don't know. I don't know how best to answer that, really. Uh, suppose sometimes. Okay, sometimes. That means you do. Just say yes. Sometimes is you, you do it. So yes. <laughs> there is no in between. It's either yes or no. You're not going to deny it either, Miss Lestrade? But not this time, all right? I swear, that thing belongs to me. The disc that Mr. Windebank is holding. Perhaps we should see what he has to say about all this. Mr. Windebank! Sir! Sir! Miss Lestrade's disc. Mr. Windebank, what exactly is this metal disc that Miss Lestrade has brought in? It seems to have hundreds of tiny little bumps on, on its surface. Ah, this is a music disc, you see. For use inside a music box. In a music box? What? You don't even know what a music box is? You Eastern lot ain't too savvy, eh? I know what a music box is. I've just never seen one of these discs before. The small protrusions on the metal disc encode the tune to be played by the music box. You simply insert the disc and set and set the machine going and beautiful music plays. It's so incredible. Tell us, what tune is on this disc? Well, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you that. There are so many different types of music box, you see. British made, German, Swiss. I have no way of knowing which particular machine this disc was made for. Ah, I see. And that's it in a nutshell. I wouldn't have any customers for an item like this, even if the young lady forfeited it. Really, I'm already offering more than I should at, at, at a penny. Uh, there's like something stuck on my eye and it's annoying the shit out of me. Like it feels like, I guess it was hair. I don't know. That was so weird. Okay, no, it was just, it felt like there's something stuck on my eye. God. That's a pack of the lies. He told me he did. He said it was, well, he? Who? Never you mind. It just ain't right, that's all. That disc is worth good money. I know it is. Well then, you'll have to try your luck at another pawn... At another pawn brokers, won't you? Ugh. He's not gonna buy it from you. What do you gotta say about Gina Lestrade? She's been... She's been in before, of course. This little tatterdemalion? I see. 
and brought some dubious article or other with her every single time, I, I might add. Dubious? What are you trying to say? I'm an honest customer, me. So, is there something dubious about the disc she brought in? Brought in today? Well, if only it were that simple. Sorry? What do you mean? What she actually brought in was a storage ticket. Uh, ah, a storage ticket. So, Miss Lestrade has actually come to redeem an article from you today. Is that right? Today is not the word. Today is not the word tonight, apparently. Yeah, that's right. A girl like me has, has a lot of stuff what needs storing. All right, yes, that's definitely dubious. The article in question would have been forfeited at midnight tonight. But as she gave me the ticket for it and repaid both the loan and the interest, I was obliged to return the article to her. But what was the, the article? Do tell us, Mr. Windebank. The little scamp is wearing it, ma'am. It's the overcoat that she redeemed. Oh, uh, overcoat. That's a nice overcoat, though. Oh. What? What's wrong with that? It fits, don't it? I mean, it's mine, so of course it does. So what about the disc, then? How does that come into all this? Ah, uh, the disc is something else. A new ar 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 article to pawn. If the girl and I agree a price... Okay, so... I'm confused. <laughs> I thought you said that Miss Lestrade brought in a storage ticket today. It's really quite simple. Yes, the child brought me a storage t t ticket and the money owed on it, as you say. For this heavy black coat, which you returned to her care, as I'd understood it. That's right. Yes, and rather unsurprisingly, as soon as the little ragamuffin <laughs> put the thing on, she went rifling around the pockets. Oh, you mean... What? Don't you think it's rude to stare at a lady? Right, okay. Ah, oh, I see. So it came from the pocket of the overcoat. It, it, it did. Yeah. If you mean this disc, then yes, exactly, ma'am. And she immediately tried to pawn it. For quite a high price as well. This is all rather suspicious, I think. See, if it was me, I would be suspicious, too. Give it up. I'm just trying to pawn something that anyone else would. Miss Lestrade, may I ask who deposited the overcoat here in the first place? Um, well, me. It doesn't really appear to be your size. Me, old man! It's me! It's... What? Oh! It's me, old man's, ain't it? Is it... Miss Lestrade? Yes, this is definitely all rather suspicious. Out of my way, please. Oh, who's who's here? Who's this picture postcard English junk? Right? This is like Mr. Englishman Mr. Ken. <laughs> he literally looks like an Englishman Mr. Ken doll. <laughs> Good day to you, ladies, gentlemen. Yeah, you see, you're not that hot. I'm sorry. You need to try harder. Is no, it's not working for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not working for me. <laughs> What's your problem, eh? There is no problem. As long as you remove yourself, I have a matter to discuss with the proprietor. Ten bucks. He's gonna be involved in our case, hundred percent. And if you intend to make a problem of it, I shall see you outside, little girl, for the hiding you deserve. Look, ain't it obvious? I ain't done talking with him yet. If you think you're such a gent, you should know how to wait in line. That is true, she has a point. 
Well, you are an impudent little brat, aren't you? As well as a pickpocket. Who, who are you? How do you know who I am? The question is, how do you not know who I am? I don't know who you are. You haven't the courtesy even to remember the faces of your victims, it seems. What? Y you mean I- from you? Broker. Um, yes sir? That is some bad luck. I believe this filthy pickpocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Yes, yes. Uh, the article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Oh my. Now that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wastrel, and needless to say... Any music box discs too. No, you, you can't have it. You just can't. It's me old man's, or it, it was. Now it's mine. Goodness, Mr. Narajodo. Oh. This is a very awkward situation. See, I noticed the pose, but I wasn't impressed. I'm not impressed by this guy. He doesn't have the flair that Van Zeeks has. Or Sholmes. He, he, he doesn't have, like, the nice, fun personality that Sholmes has. Him, on the other hand, he's just a cold rich shrewd guy and that's it like w w what are you gonna do with him nothing <laughs> this is a very awkward situation yes i think perhaps we should hear both sides of the story in a little more detail are we gonna do a deduction summonation here oh god okay so mrs lestrade the gentleman's accusation what is going on I say we beat up the rich guy. <laughs> and oh, Paris of Sun, how's it going? I didn't say hi, I'm so sorry. Miss Lestrade, is what the gentleman is saying. What you think? It's all lies, ain't it? Obviously. I swear on my life, I ain't ever laid eyes on, on that dandy before. <laughs> I like how she calls him dandy. <laughs> Let's hear it now, you, you little ragamuffin. You stole it, didn't you? That ticket you brought in here just now. No, I swear it. I swear to God. It was barely an hour ago. I was walking along the street and minding my own business. When this little gutterling ran into me, I knew at once what had happened. I've been robbed yet again, I thought to myself. Those wretched pickpockets. Yet again. Oh yes, as you can see, I am a man of impeccable style. This isn't the first time that I've been targeted by these black slum scoundrels. Where is Breland when you need him? He's definitely Breland's type. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. You cannot be... He's... He's... He's totally... Totally into that LGBTQ scene. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's totally into the LGBTQ scene. I'm so, Wait, wait. Poses like that? Ooh, uh, Yes. That's his... That's him. Oh... Brilliant really was here earlier. Damn. Yeah, I was so busy, like, trying to s fix everything. Because I had to, like, reset all of my passwords and everything. He's in the club, baby. <laughs> but he left before this guy showed up. Oh, damn. Now then, relinquish my overcoat. Come along now, Miss Lestrade. Give the good gentleman his coat back. If you're going to cause trouble, I shall have no choice but to call the police. Hold on, why does everyone think it's me? Just look at this dandy cove, and you think I'm the dodgy one? I'm sorry, but no one's going to believe you. Well, what about evidence? Yeah. Where's your evidence that I've stolen something, huh? Come on, let's see it. Oh, I have evidence, naturally. You what? What? Oh, shit. Okay, what is this evidence? Evidence that the article Miss Lestrade redeemed actually belongs to this gentleman. Of course, we need only consult Mr. Windebink's ledgers to know the truth. We'll be able to look up the name of the person who deposited the article in the first place. Yes, brilliant. 
I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that won't be possible. Oh. Why? I never ask customers' names. That's a strict policy of mine. But why not? Well, now, as you can imagine, some of my customers have circumstances to consider. A great many of them prefer to maintain their uh, uh, anon anonymity. Yes, I see. But how can you know if an article belongs to, to the person asking to redeem it? The honor code? Oh, it's quite simple. The honor code is not a valid excuse for things. And what up, Mia Fell? That's shady, but also the grind. Uh, but don't worry, no worries, no worries. You are totally fine. You're good. You, you don't miss much whenever you come in. You're fine. You come in at the perfect time. Good sir. Might I trouble you for the watchword associated with the article in question? Of course. It's... Professor. Yes, that's right. And all the evidence we need. This gentleman is the rightful owner of the article without doubt. A watchword? Interesting. But what if someone has the same watchword? What if, what if like, I decided to put, put that too? And then there's like, oh, well, it's both of you guys the article. It's, how does that work, sir? That, 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 that is not liable. So about these watchwords, Mr. Windebank. As I just explained, I never ask customers' names when they deposit items with me. There are many reasons why. Certain customers would like to keep their activity secret. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes will never cease to amaze me. Ever. <laughs> I swear to God. It wasn't exactly a subtle glance at Mr. Sholmes, now was it? <laughs> Great detectives have no dark secrets. None at all. Yes, well, anyway. That's why I always ask for a watchword whenever I accept a new article. In many ways, it's like the secret combination of numbers used to un unlock a vault. The date of deposit, a description, and a watchword uniquely identify each item. And of course... Then I give the storage then I give the storage ticket to the customer. When someone comes to redeem something, I ask for the ticket and the watchword. And if that someone tells you the correct watchword, you return the article? That's right, sir. Yes. Just as soon as the the requisite fee is paid. And I have supplied you with the information you require already, but for the avoidance of doubt. The article is an overcoat, deposited two months ago on 15th February. With a watchword of Professor. You see, I feel like he he somehow rummaged through things and he um he he, he found it out somehow. All perfectly correct information, sir. But but how? Really? This is beyond a joke now. I don't got any water. Yeah, my throat was so angry for me from yesterday. <laughs> this is beyond a joke now. There is no further room for doubt. <laughs> Alright, so that- that was something. Oops. That was something. Alright, sir, what do you got to say? In your case. Hmm? Picture postcard, gentlemen. <laughs> I like that's how the day we gave him. <laughs> Excuse me, but who are you? One would expect the inquirer to introduce himself first. Though clearly you are not b British, British, so perhaps our ways are foreign to you. Oh, sorry, yes. We're from the Empire of Japan. We're studying here. Oh, yes, Japan. I've heard talk of the place. What the fuck was that? Uh, 
I miss Sherlock already. Sherlock, come back. <laughs> Sherlock, come back, please. <laughs> what? Baby, this man is, you know, no. Fuck no. No, he needs to go. What the fuck was that? What? What was this? And he didn't even do it. Like, he was like, uh, uh. Yeah, mm. it's like, well, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and it's so, cr it looks so cringy on him too. Its inhabitants live on some fiery brown colored soup dressed up in exotic spices. You might be thinking of somewhere else. And what was that theatrical gesticulation about? Yes. <laughs> I mean, he gay and so am I. He's in the club. Oh, Jesus. He's... Mm. He's something, all right. <laughs> Perhaps. Anyway, if you are a gentleman, sir, you offer your, your own name first before inquiring after the name of another. Of course, yes. I'm Ryonosuke Naruhoto. I'm a lawyer. Well, a student of law, really. My name is Suzato Mikotoba. I am Mr. Naruhodo's assistant. I see. Mm -hmm. My name is... They did not name this man Egg Benedict. They did not name him Egg Benedict. Out of all names. They did not make a pun of Egg Benedict. Oh my god. My name is Benedict. Yes, Eggert Benedict. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> oh my and your name is garbage? Oh my god. <laughs> I found you from TikTok. I'm so, I'm so excited to attend my first interview. Oh, thank you so much. And Sharik Ogre, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> But this this man needs to go. Him and his dance moves need to go. <laughs> Enchanté. Okay. It, it... Get the fuck out. Please. <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> How about that, Mr. Eggert Benedict? <laughs> oh my god. He's so refined in how he holds himself and how he speaks, but that name is suspicious. Now, to the matter of <laughs> God. Dude, the day I make a compilation of, like, just crazy shit in Ace Attorney is gonna be great. <laughs> now, to the matter at hand. Can you st- <laughs> I'm done. I, do I have to keep- do I have to keep talking to him, please? He's getting worse and worse by the second. I can't. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, what, what was that? What- what are you doing? <laughs> oh yeah, bring it around, T. <laughs> oh my god. What is today? What the fuck is today? <laughs> What is going on? My overcoat returned it at once to someone with the style to carry it off. Pretty soon he'll just do the entire bubble blowing ritual. <laughs> every every move he makes, every breath he takes, I can't stand watching him. Girl, me and you both. I, I can't stand him already. He's gonna be so annoying if I have to be at court with him. Oh, it fits very well, actually. Holy shit. So, let that be an end to the matter. And thank you for your custom, Mr. Eggert Benedict, sir. <laughs> oh, stop! Just stop! <laughs> With such reasonable rates of interest, I may even decide- Don't! Don't come back! Get the fuck out! I'm- No, don't come back! This is why I hate grown-ups. Just because I'm a diver, everyone thinks that makes me a liar. And the contents of the coat pockets, if you please, broker. 
But of course, sir, here is the disc for you. Oh, Jesus Christ. Just this one? Pardon, sir? I was expecting another. Uh, that is, I deposited an... Suspicious? What do you mean, expecting? Another disc? Oh, um, oh dear. I regret to inform you, sir, that... That what was deposited with me was merely the overcoat. The disc happened to be in one of the pockets, but I was completely unaware of it until now. Right. Bitch, that is a fake name. <laughs> so, so, Gutterling, you're hiding more of what's rightfully mine, are you? Says who, eh? I don't know nothing about it. Very well. I... Where is Breland when you need him? This is like literally all of Breland right here. <laughs> Breland would be dying at this. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. Wait a minute. That disc is mine. Oh shit. What do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You you've drawn blood, you filthy animal. Oh my, yes. There's the blood on on the disc. It's because of all those sharp little bumps. The man must have scratched his finger on them. That is a sharp ass fuck disc. I found it first, all right. I I mean, it belonged to me old man. So you're not having it. Oi, you, you take it. M me. If I hang on to it, they'll they'll have it off me again. So you keep keep hold of it. Miss Lestrade, I Why is this disc so important to her? The music box disc has been entered into the court record. You there in the black livery? Livery? The fuck? Hand that disc to me at once, please. No, don't. He's lying. Grown-ups are all liars. Uh, what do I do now? How am I going to resolve this? Um... We can run. Run. Resolved! Finished! We- we left? And then we finished. GG's. Okay, thank- I finished the game, we ran. I solved problems by running away. GG's. <laughs> That's funny. I like how he didn't stop me either. But like, I don't think that was the right option anyway, so... Yeah. I'm gonna move though. Easy, right? No, I ha I'm pretty sure I have to go back. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Um... I needed some fresh air, guys. Sorry. So, maybe we talk to the pawnbroker guy? Mr. Windebank is clearly at a loss here. We have to do something about this before he reaches for that revolver of his. Okay, um... Oh, Mr. Sholmes! We're gonna do an examination summonation, yes? Um, Mr. Sholmes? What are you examining with such keen interest there? As you enjoy a bar of caramel, I see. Is he still depressed? So. You found me at last, Mr. Nutterholdo. Sorry? After that young pickpocket sent me on my way, I was forced to lurk in the shadows. <laughs> oh! Cruelly ostracized as the best- as the rest of you partook in the jovia atmosphere of fellowship. I had nothing to occupy my mind, but was too ashamed to let society see what my downfall had done to me. So, feigning mock interest, I pretended to examine the tedious trinkets in this desolate place. Whilst, as you shrewdly observed, gnawing on the only friend I have left, this 7% solution of caramel. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, Sholmes, that's so sad! <laughs> Pray, do you claim to understand the depths of my despair, Mr. Naruhodo? How could you? But how could you? I like how Mr. Sholmes went from, like, overly confident to, like, just downhill 
emo kid. <laughs> like he's he's completely changed. I was so lonely, so desperately lonely. Then why on earth didn't you rejoin the conversation? Things have gone from bad to worse here, you know. Yes, I overheard much of your conversation. Or rather, in my craving for human contact, my ears devoured every word that was uttered. You really were sad, weren't you? Poor Mr. Sholmes. I feel simply awful for you. It would seem that my interferences are... C or in inferences are correct. Oh, surely you're not about to tell us that you've solved the entire case once again. My dear madame, sometimes I wonder... Were my genius for deduction to be commoditized? How much would how much could I pawn it for? That no. <laughs> it seems Mr. Sholmes has had another of his flashes of inspiration. But who knows if it will help resolve the situation between Miss Lestrade and the mysterious mysterious gentleman. What's the right thing to do here? Listen to the deduction, because we kind of have to. So. Well, Mr. Strahd, it would appear you find yourself in something of a predicament. Kick the rich man's ass. <laughs> Where the blue blazes have you been, eh? Pardon? When the lady's in trouble, a true gent's supposed to be there to help. Straight away. <laughs> Not an hour later. <laughs> Harsh. This man needs to stop. <laughs> and who, pray tell, are you? Mr. Egger Bennett. That is not your name. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you have in my eyes a veritably encyclopedic, encyclopedic array of curiosities about your person. Nevertheless, there are two immovable conclusions I have drawn. I beg your pardon? The first is this. That has to be a fake name. <laughs> the true reason for your, your visit to this pawn brokery today is something you have not yet revealed. That is true. And the second is this. A considerable crime is in contemplation, one you will orchestrate with intent to steal a vast sum of money. Well, Mr. Benedict, what say you to my deductions? How? He's turned white as a hard-boiled egg. Oh, you're so funny, Ryanosuke. <laughs> oh, you fucking god. <laughs> I would say that once again, <laughs> Mr. Sholmes has made a flawless deduction. Just, who do you think you are, sir? Ah, yes, as I hoped. That is precisely the pain expression I was looking for. Oh. So, shall we begin? The time has come for yet another Herlock Sholmes logic and reasoning spectacular. The Great Deduction. Oh man. First of all, we must ask ourselves on what business you ventured to this prawn brokery today. You claim to have followed this pickpocket here, having had the redemption ticket stolen from you on the street. But that is most certainly a lie. The real truth is something quite different. As revealed by that which you hold in your hands. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the staff recruitment flyer. Wait, wait, what? The piece of paper in your hand is a staff wanted advertisement from this very shop. Yet even the most unobservant would soon realize that a man of your appearance has no need for such employ. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. The cane which you unwittingly clutch to your person exhibits an incontrovertible con contradiction. <laughs> 
What utter rot. I I've had this cane for years. The contradiction of, of which I speak, of course. Missing furrow. I I don't know what a furrow is, but we're about to find out. The end of any w walking cane would be terminated with a metal but yet yeah, terminated with a metal furrow to protect the wooden tip. And yet detailed analysis shows the wooden tip of this stick to be utterly bare. Therefore, there's only one conclusion. I like how Shonja's just like all up in his business. <laughs> the rod that you hold in your hand, which appears to be a walking cane, is in fact no cane at all. You recoil, sir. Is something wrong? I... well, I... And in your recoiling, you inadvertently facilitate the answer of the next conundrum to, to present itself. Namely, what is the truth behind this rod you bear? Hmm? Yes, your reaction betrays the truth. The handle, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understanding this riddle, you see. From the, from the moment I saw it, my suspicions were aroused. What walking cane demands such a stout handle, mused I. But of course, as I said, this is no walking cane. No, that rod. Is the broken handle of a shovel. What? Are you insane? And now, having de determined this undeniable truth, the conclusion is clear. Your true motive for coming here was to take employment at this establishment in order to excavate the ground beneath the... That, that sounds way off, Mr. Sholmes. I'm sorry. That sounds very off. What a calculated crime you have conceived, sir. A wickedly calculated crime. I think this is the most absurd deductions he's come up with. To be honest. Um. Oh, okay. Okay, part two. Okay. Now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. For we must expose the detail details of this elaborate crime you have in the planning. This is utterly absurd. You suggest that I, a gentleman, intend to excavate the ground beneath the pond brokery with a broken shovel? What on earth do you propose I could expect to find there? Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Some long forgotten treasure, I suppose? Save for such fanciful theory, what possible reason could I have to do as you say? Oh, but there is ample reason. As you are only too well aware, Mr. Benedict. Ah, and your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. What? Let us consider what would motivate a man to infiltrate a shop such as this and covertly dig beneath this floor. The answer is revealed by the council notice on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. I think it was the gun. I think anything on that table would 100% be the gun. I I would not look at a council notice. I would be looking at the gun. That's what I would be looking at. <laughs> this letter gives notice of public works to be carried out in the local area. And according to the enclosed plan of the upcoming sewerage works, beneath this shop runs a sewer that adjoins another, one that runs under the bank on the opposite side of the road. This madness has entered the sewers now, has it? By excavating the ground beneath your feet, you would gain access to the waterway. That flows in a very close proximity to the great vault of the financial institution opposite. What are you... In summary, sir. You devise a master plan to pull off an elaborate bank robbery by dint of the underground tunnels. Master plan? Which brings us at last to the final chapter of this 
lurid th scheme. With what plunder did the thief hope to make off from the underground vault of the bank? Are you quite serious? Have you consulted with Scotland Yard some days ago? I happen to know the answer. But naturally, the answer is no secret to you, is it, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't- I lost Sholmes. He lost me, like, on the first sentence. <laughs> Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. You see, this picture postcard tell us all we need to know. A postcard of the Great Exhibition? I'm afraid you've quite lost me. Currently in the final stages of preparation, the Great Exhibition will soon be underway. And the government has provided extra funds to complete its centerpiece, the Crystal Tower. Funds that currently sit in the vault of the bank, on the other side on the other side of this road. Okay, so the funds for that are in that bank. Okay. Pardon. Yes, the considerable crime you have been contemplating is the theft of that which sits in the vault of that bank, the special reserve funds for the Great Exhibition. Of course, that is top secret police information, so keep it under your hat, please. <clears throat> Alright, good job, Jones. Now it's time for me to, a to actually tell you what, what happened or what's going on. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this pawn brokering puzzle. <clears throat> God, that that was a interesting deduction, sir. Um, Mr. Sholmes. Well, m Mr. Naderhodo, an impressively upbeat deduction for a detective racked with loneliness. Would you not agree? Was it true what you said about the bank o o o over the road? And what was it true what you said about the bank o over the road and what it has in, in its vault? Indeed, though few know of its exist existence, it is one of the government's most closely guarded secrets. Gregson told me in the strictest confidence. <clears throat> but you just announced it to everyone here, rather loudly, in fact. Ah. And if it's such a big secret, how would Mr. B how would Mr. B Benedict have come to find out about it? There can be but one ex explanation for that. Clearly, it is because the man is a criminal. But what if? But what if he didn't know an a anything about the money in the vault? If he's a criminal, as, as he said then buying a brand new shovel is sure to be the first thing he does now that you revealed the secret. Oh, or if he doesn't, maybe Mr. Wendy Bank will. He already has plenty of shovels here after all. Oh my life, I assure you, I am not so unscrup unscrupulous. Or a criminal. <laughs> oh, I like the criminal with the K, that was great. Well, hopefully this has taught you a valuable lesson. Sensitive information must be handled with the ut utmost care. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sholmes, because you broke every ruling on how to handle sensitive information. 100%. One can never be sure that someone, someone privy to secrets won't disclose them. And once the word is out, it's out. Perhaps I'll think twice before confiding in you next time, Mr. Sholmes. An excellent idea, Mr. Nada an excellent idea. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't tell Mr. Sholmes shit, ever. Well then, Mr. Nada you know what to do, I'm sure. Yes, let's listen to the great deduction again, and see if we can massage it into, sh in into shape. Um, very well then, let us start once more from the beginning. Of Herlock Sholmes' mag magnificent logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. Alright, Mr. Sholmes, we are ready to tell you how fucking wrong you are in this, alright? First of all, we must ask ourselves on what business you ventured to this pawn brokery today. 
You claim to have followed this pickpocket here, having had the redemption ticket stolen from you on the street. See, but that is most certainly a lie. The real truth is something quite different. Uh huh. As revealed by that which you hold in your hands. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is a staff recruitment flyer. That is probably not a staff recruitment flyer. So, by Mr. Sholm's reasoning, Mr. Benedict came here in order to apply for a job so he could dig down through the floor. Yes, in an attempt to tunnel in into the sewers to gain access to the money in the vault of the bank across the road. But he wouldn't get very far with a broken shovel, would he? No, I think it's fair to say his motives lie elsewhere. The question is, where? What did bring Mr. Benedict here at this particular point in time? Alright, um... So that is a staff recruitment flyer. Oh! Hi, scribbled writing. Oh! L look at all the scribbled notes on the back of the flyer here. I don't believe it. What is it? Listen to what it says. Name, Gina Lestrade. Height, 5 foot 2. Green cap, scruffy waistcoat, grubby white shirt, blue satchel, ragged. It's a detailed description of Miss Lestrade. Goodness. There's even a sketch of her, hat and all. Although, if he showed it to her, she'd fired that smoke grenade launcher in his face for sure. And look, the details of this shop have been written down here too. When the Biggs Pawn Brokery, Baker Street, Redemption Deadline, 15th April, which is, which is today's date. Why would Mr. Benedict have all that information scrawled on the back of that piece of paper? Okay. That is the correction, sir. Take that! Bitch. Take that. Mm. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the info about Miss Lestrade. Quite so, my dear fellow. It would appear that the writing and sketch on that the writing and sketch on the reverse of the flyer pertain to the pickpocket Miss Lestrade and to Mr. Windebank's pawn brokery here. Oh, uh, yes. You originally told us that you had merely given chase after Miss Lestrade stole the redemption ticket from you. But that, sir, is a thinly veiled lie. It is the information on the back of the flyer that led you here t that led you here today. By which I mean here to Windebanks upon brokery and today the redemption deadline of that coat. So you waited outside for the young girl matching the description you have written down to arrive. Oh. And you have gone to some lengths to hide that reason for your pursuit of Miss Lestrade. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. The cane which you unwittingly clutch into your person exhibits an incontrovertible contradiction. What utter rot. I've, I've had this cane for years. It's obviously the initials on the cane. The contradiction which the speech of course is missing. That is not the contradiction, sir. It is the initials on the cane. What's up, furl? It's the metal cap commonly found on the end of a cane, Mr. Narohodo. Ah, the bit that makes the nice clinking sound on the pavement? Yes, exactly. And Mr. Sholmes is right. It appears to be missing on this cane. But it doesn't actually look broken, does it? No, it doesn't. Though the gentleman certainly did recoil when Mr. Sholmes identified the cane as suspicious. In other words... There's something secret about the cane that Mr. Benedict would rather we don't know. Mm hmm I love the tiny sketch. <laughs> right? The, the tiny sketch is so cute. Alright. Um. Hey, ooh, sorry. Yeah, I guess that's it. Alright, letters, letters, letters. Yes. Initialing. Look here, Miss Suzato. There are some letters on the handle. Yes, those must be initials, I think. In the West, it's customary for people to engrave their belongings with the first letters of their names. Sir Herlock Sholmes would be HS, you mean? That's right. And the initials on this cane, obviously. 
Oh. A-G? Why does it feel as though that's not quite right? Because his name is Eggert Benedict and A-G doesn't spell Eggert Benedict. Take that! So take that, bitch. Bam. <laughs> The contradiction of which I speak is, of course, the initialing. A most astute observation, oh, wouldn't you say, Mr. Eggert Benedict? We are led to believe, sir, that your initials are EB. Yet, in a most possessive manner, you have in your grasp a cane bearing the initials AG. An incontrovertible contradiction indeed, would you not agree? No, you're you're wrong. This this cane isn't. You said before that you'd had that cane for years. Y you did, Mister Sir. So don't try to tell us that you just borrowed it from a friend or found it in the park. In short, though you hold yourself to be a gentleman, you have withheld your true name. You recoil, sir. Is something wrong? I... W well, I... And in your recoiling, you inadvertently facilitate the answer of the next conundrum to present itself. Namely, what is the truth behind this rod you bear? Yes, your reaction betrays the truth. The handle which you evidently would like to conceal is the key to un understanding this riddle, you see. Let's consider the bare bones of what's happened here. Miss Lestrade redeemed that fine looking overcoat. And now a mysterious man ha has appeared introducing himself with a fake name and claiming that the overcoat belongs to him. But we know that he actually identified Miss Lestrade from a written description, which suggests that everything else he's, he's told us is untrue. So what we need to do here is somehow prove that the overcoat cannot possibly belong to him. I mean, oh, 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 there's a tear over here. Oh, the seam on, on, on the shoulder is c c c coming apart, look. So it is. Do you know a moment ago when Mr. Benedict was surprised by something that was said? I thought I heard him make a rather strange noise. It sounded a bit like a tiny growl. But now I think it was probably the sound of this seam ripping open. Oh, rip, rip that coat. F for that coat, man. He ripped it. This garbage ass person. <laughs> if you look closely, it does seem to be a very tight fit. The sleeves are stretched to bursting and he wouldn't have a hope of fastening it at the front. If you were to run around in it, I'm sure the whole thing would, would fall apart. Hmm. That I'd like to see. Sorry. So, how can we make Mr. Benedict run run around? <laughs> oh my god, Suzato. She's really giving this some thought. Yes, the split seam. Take that! Yes. The split seam, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understanding this riddle, you see. Yeah, Mr. Benedict. Yes, because the overcoat is rather obviously a poor fit. Having forced it over your broad shoulders, the seam is already breaking apart. My suspicions were aroused from the outset. When you so badly lied about your name and so boldly waylaid this, this pickpocket, this catalog of untruths has all been for one very specific purpose. <laughs> for the gun, right? <laughs> to steal the article that the young girl redeemed from Mr. Windebank. Yes. But what really irks me is this. The considerable crime I initially imagined has been consider considerably curtailed. I yeah, he was not going here for a job, sir. Yeah. All right, part two. Because he definitely was not. I'm 
trying to go for a job. Now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. For we must expose the details of this elaborate crime you have in the planning. This is utterly absurd. You suggest that I, a gentleman, designed a wheeze to filch some tawdry article of pawnage? Have you forgotten that I redeemed the article in the proper manner using the watchword? Oh yeah, he used the watchword alright. <laughs> Had I not been the one to deposit it in the first place? How could I possibly have known the relevant the relevant detail? Nissen pa pas pas pois I don't I don't French. <laughs> oh, but the watchword can be discovered. As you were only too well aware, Mr. Benedict. Ah, uh, your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. What? Me, I'm a tawdry piece of pottage. <laughs> oh my god, parasitic. <laughs> let, us con let us consider how one might come to learn a secret watchword relating to the pawn property of another. The method is revealed by the council notice on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. The, the direction of the deduction must change rather dramatically now, I think. Yes, no more talk of t -t tunneling into the sewers. Which is a pity, because it all sounded rather exciting. I mean, it did, but it sounded way too, like, unrealistic. Anyway, you can't deny that this mysterious gentleman did know the watchword. Yes, prof Professor. If he didn't know that word, Mr. Windebank would never allow you to redeem the article. Or, looking at it another way, if you did know that word, Mr. Me a Windebank would allow you to redeem deem the article whether it was yours or not that's what i'm saying that shit is so unsecure so the question is could this gentleman have found the watchword out somehow right okay mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. oh note lit Look at this, Miss Suzato. Ah, it appears to be a memo that Mr. Windebank has, has scribbled to himself. Let's see, what does it say? Oh, Professor. Yeah. That's how we found out. Mr. Windebank must make a note of the watchwords his customers give him right before their eyes. And in an alarmingly clear script as well. Oh dear. I don't know where to look. Who knows what other secrets I might see? So yeah, he's looking at the note. Like, yeah, take that. Yeah. The method is revealed by the notelet on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. Yes, the broker here follows the same procedure whenever a customer comes to redeem an article. He asks the customer for the watchword and notes down the response uttered on a notelet he has to hand. Then he consults his ledger and confirms whether or not the watchword matches that of the article in question. I would expect nothing less of a diligent pawnbroker. But his Diligence clearly has its disadvantages. What are you talking about? It is increasingly apparent that you were present in the shop before your accusation against Miss Lestrade. Oh, thank you for the sub gifts, sub Chaos. You're always gifting me subs. Stop spoiling me. You're spoiling me. Stop spoiling me. <laughs> but thank you, Chaos. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Colorful As always. Chaos SP has gifted a sub to Hibiscus Accommodate. <laughs> Alright. It increasingly it is increasingly apparent that you were present in this shop before your accusation against Mr. Strahd. Colorful Chaos SP has gifted a sub to Silentine. <laughs> Which IQ do you think this one room has? I don't even know. I'm too like dumb right now <laughs> to even like think. In all likelihood, you followed her inside and then observed her talking to Mr. Windebank. When the diligent broker made a note of the watchword as his common practice, 
You observed him writing the word professor on the notelet beside the ledger. Ah, that's what happens. And that, sir, was the master plan you devised to steal the pawned article from the young Miss Lestrade. Master plan? Yes, sir. And you better work that spin, because we're about to spin your ass into jail pretty soon. <laughs> Which brings us at last to the final chapter of this lurid scheme. Why would you go to such lengths to redeem that particular article from this pawnbroker? Are you quite serious? For an ill-fitting overcoat hardly seems to justify the effort, much less a worthless music box disc. But naturally, you had every good reason to, to make them yours. D didn't you, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. The spin is the only move I respect of his. <laughs> the spin is not that bad, actually. See, the articles we're talking about are the overcoat and the music box disc that was in one of the po that was in one of the pockets, which, according to Mr. Windebank, isn't even worth a penny. And yet, this man went to such lengths to steal them. Why? I wonder if perhaps we already have the evidence we need to explain it, Miss Narahodo. Could we really? I better have a thorough look through all, all, all the evidence we've collected so far. Oh, man. Oh, shit. I wonder what the evidence could be. Who knows what the evidence might be? Oh, my God. Could it be the armband? Or could it be the music box disc? Who knows? Actually, let me examine. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. I take back all the bullshit that I was saying. Okay, um, that is very serious. Oh, there's a little scrap of paper stuck on the reverse side of the disc. Look, it's a scribbled word or two. It looks like somebody's name, Mr. McGilded. Yeah, that is that is Mr. McGilded's name. That is Mr. McGilded's name. For Mr. McGild. Yeah, that is yeah. M McGilded? It could be, but it is. Mr. Narahodo, a name I shall never forget for as long as I live. But why? Why is his name on this? This is some serious shit. Oh, this is getting interesting. Okay, now I retract back what I said. This is actually very important evidence, very important information. I am sorry for mocking you, evidence. You are a very big piece of evidence. Take that! Very big piece of evidence. Holy shit! You see, this music box disc tells us all we need to know. What's that? On the back, it reads for Mr. For, for Mick Gilded. Right, uh-huh. This motherfucker, yeah. Ah, oh, Mr. Magnus McGilded. The unfortunate philan philan philanthropist who perished in curious circumstances at the Old Bailey two months ago. A prominent man in London, though his loan mongering demonstrated a distinct lack of scruples. So, you're an associate of his, are you? Or perhaps a subordinate? Mr. McGilded was a man of unusually small stature, in fact. He was precisely the right size for that overcoat that you squeezed yourself into. Shit. Your true identity remains shrouded in mystery, Mr. Eggert Benedict. But the final conclusion here is crystal clear. The reason you came to this pawn brokery today was to retrieve an article left behind by the late Magnus McGilded. <sighs> okay. I thought this was going to be some dumb shit, but this is actually some real shit. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> what is going on?
Yeah, deduction complete. Elementary. We did it. <laughs> Elementary. Well, well. Mr. Magnus McGilded. Not a name I expect to hear in these circumstances. The man came back. Mr. Sholmes, I'm afraid there's something very troubling on my mind. Mm -hmm. Pray tell, Mrs. Otto. Well, according to what Mr. Windebank told us earlier, today was the final day on which the coat could have been redeemed, was it not? I swear to God, if... Oh, that was a good neck crack. Sorry. <laughs> I swear to God, if the turn-in date was the same day that the coat was turned in when he either A, the court case happened, or B, I mean, he died on the, on the same day. But if it was on that day, I'm going to lose my shit. Today was the final day, uh-huh. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Today would be precisely two months since it was fuck. Fuck, 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 Cause, cause, cause this is two months later from, from that case. That means that was, oh, fuck. Well, today is 15th April, so two months ago today. Shit. The first case. The day of the first case. Would have been 15th Fe day of the first fucking case. It, it's all carefully recorded in my ledger. Deposited at 10.30 p.m., I see. But, but that suggests... But he died. What do you mean 10.30 p.m.? He died. No, he died. He literally died after the case. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. He, he died. But that suggests, yes, 15 February. It's precisely the day on which the omnibus murder took place. Yes, that's when he died. And half past 10 in the evening is precisely the time at which the terrible events were unfolding. Suggestive is not the word. It would seem the matter is entirely beyond coincidence. You are, of course, at liberty to make whatever outlandish, outlandish uh, deductions you choose, however. I suspect you, Mr. Benedict. First of all, you name your ass Mr. Agar Benedict. Then you try to accuse poor Miss Miss Lestrade of stealing the 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 contents of the items. Then, conveniently, you come on the last day on 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 this shit. Most likely, one, you are Mr. McGilded's subordinate, or two, whoever you're working with hired you to sabotage Mr. McGilded because maybe he knew too much on something. I don't know. I don't trust you. I don't trust Mr. Eggert Benedict. I don't trust at all. The only eggs I trust are my chicken eggs, and that's it. <laughs> you are, of course, at liberty to make whatever outlandish deductions you choose. However, I must insist you hand over the music di- Um, okay, look. Why are you mad that your name is Egg Benedict, huh? Why are you mad for- <laughs> You need to chill. You need to chill, or else I will go all BLM on you right now. <laughs> chill the fuck out. We can talk about it. How about that? It would be a terrible shame for you to return to your native land in a box. What, what do I do? I kind of, I kind of want to put, okay, let me, let me, let me save just in case if I actually die for some bullshit reason. Um, I want to, okay, I actually want to, uh, absolutely not. There are some things a man must protect at all costs. This may be, this may well be one of those things. Then again, it may not. Oh, Mr. Wind- Oh, wow, yes! Mr. Windabank! Fuck the egg, dude. We don't listen to weird names. <laughs> Mr. Windabank, let's go. 
This is my shop. I can't allow any harm to come to my customers. If that were to happen, I should have to. Okay, look, you're supposed to. You're supposed to point the gun at the guy, not to your head. You're doing this all wrong as a shopkeeper. <laughs> you, Mr. Windebank. Mr. Windebank, no. All right, that's enough. Oh. Inspector Gregson, hello. Inspector. That's right, Sunshine. The alarm was raised, raised on one of our dedicated uh, emergency lines. So we got here as fast as we could. Now, what's all this about? Oh, praise be. You're here at last. I was moments away from forfeiting my, my own life in my very own establishment. Why, though? You could have... Okay. <laughs> it would seem you have the upper hand. Yeah, bitch. Right, you lot got some explaining to, explaining to do. I don't appreciate being bothered with some... With some... Petty argy bargy. What? Petty? Mr. Winterbank very nearly met with his end. Yeah, by his own gun, as far as I can tell. Oh, dear. And the whole of Britain could meet with this end if I don't get to the bottom of, 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 of the case I'm supposed to be working on. What? What on earth is the case, Inspector? Spare no detail, Gregson. I, I, I might have said a little too much. No matter. It's nothing to do with you lot. Right. Anyway, sir, you're gonna have to come with me down to the station. But of course, Inspector. Yes, yeah, go. Get the fuck out of the store. Is he just gonna- okay. <laughs> of course, and then he just like spins. <laughs> he just spins. He just- I'ma spin out. Peace. <laughs> He's getting away. Oh my god. Holy shit. Get after him, lads. Whistle the beat officer, too. Sir, oh my god, this man did not just spin out of the store. There's been a spate of thefts at pawn shops around here recently. So we've fitted emergency emergency buttons underneath the counters for brokers to let us know when there's trouble. Oh, Inspector, I was very worried there for a while. Very worried indeed. Now then, my permanent... Lee in morning. Oh, yes. I'll be taking whatever it is of McGilded down t t to the yard. Thank you very much. Wait, what? So hand it over. But why? Oh, yes, of course. No, don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine. That is mine. I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to Mr. McGilded has to be taken in as evidence now. As evidence? We're gonna be working on this case. If, if the police <laughs> demand something as evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to capitulate. It's all yours, Inspector. Oh boy. I think we're, we're gonna be working on the McGilded case. Low key. And so, we handed Mr. McGilded's disc over to Inspector Gregson. And we're summer... And we're... And we're summarily turfed out of the shop and onto the street. God. Words. 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 To be continued. To be continued. Well, that was something. A lot longer than I expected, actually. But that was that was definitely something. Definitely something. Give me a sec. I'm gonna turn on my fan up real quick. Does it be getting hot in my room? I'm working on stuff all day, so my PC is just like burning up my entire room. 15th April, Baker Street. See, that's why I hate, I hate grown-ups. All they do is feed you a pack of lies and take stuff away from you. 
Nothing like having two guns waved around. Yeah, for real. Oh, really, Miss Lestrade? Tell me, is that overcoat keeping you warm? What? Oh my, surely you were given that. Yeah, the D let me keep it. After I, I looked daggers at him for long enough. Oh, damn. He went through the pockets and, and then said, Go on, then. Have it have it bef before telling me to the to Scarper. I don't know what you said. <laughs> always pays off. Always pays off giving people a look like like you ate them. See, every time I read her stuff, I, I just can't because the the accenting fucks me up. I can't help feeling that it's going to get you into serious trouble one day. What I really wanted was that nice, shiny disc, mind. The music box disc? But Mr. Windabake said it was practically worthless. I think I'm gonna go and have another bash. Give him a long, hard stare. I think not, Miss Lestrade. We shan't enter a, 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 a Windabanks again today. Why not? That's not fair. It can't be helped, I'm afraid. The police are in investigating the scene now and taking a statement from Mr. Windabank. But that disc's mine! I had the ticket for this coat and it was in this coat's pocket. And there should be something else in all. That's what that's that's what that rotten cove said, ain't it? Yes, he did mention something about another ar article. He did. Yes, he did. Well then, that's mine too, whatever it is. Now she's really pushing her luck. Miss Lestrade, I think it's time to admit admit defeat. You've had your haul for the day. Yeah, and it's all your fault, Sholmes. Look, if it wasn't for Sholmes, you, you wouldn't have the jacket either. So what are your plans now? Will you dine with us this evening? What the fuck? Iris would be delighted to cook, I'm sure, and I might entertain you with a modest violin recital. Hmm. No ta? No ta? What is what does that mean? Oh, I I guess no. Why would I come round your place? Have have you lost your head or something? Okay. Um she denied the kindness 100%. <laughs> oh dear, she's gone. Hmm. Having reviled on me quite unnecessarily I might add I can't help wondering if perhaps she might turn up anyway interesting when she's had a chance to calm down I think there's a good chance she'll decide to come very well then I'll inform Iris to set a place for our potential guests at the dinner table this evening and one more thing I should be glad of your company later too sorry I believe I will have a rather splendid surprise to show you. Oh! Oh, how exciting! What is it? Oh. You shall have to wait and see, Miss Suzato. Until later, then. Alright, I'm excited what the Sholmes has to show. Um... Okay, there's nothing to examine, so I'm assuming we just go back to the Shulb suite. Gina looked at them with her special eyes. <laughs> Alright, 15th April, 3.46pm, Shulm's suite. Ah, Susie and Bruno, come in, come in. Good afternoon, Iris. Thank you so much for breakfast this morning. Oh, don't mention it. Goodness, l l look at the time already. Busy as always? I am. I'm preparing everything for dinner this evening. Of course, because Sholmes literally said we're going to have like a whole ass meal with one extra whole person. <laughs> already? You're obviously cooking something special, are you? Oh, yes. After all, we have a special guest joining us. Guess who it is? Go on. You'll never guess. 
Um, look at those little eyes of hers shining. I can't wait to disappoint her. <laughs> oh dear, it is awkward when you already know the answer, isn't it? It's Ginny! Isn't that exciting? Oh, what a surprise! Yes, that's wonderful news! Wow, Iris seems overjoyed at the idea. I can't wait to learn some pickpocketing trips from a real professional. Oh yes, that does sound like fun. I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate, are you, Mr. Naruhodo? Okay, Suzato, can you, like, chill? We, we wanna have fun! Um, by the way, Iris, what's Mr. Sholm's up to? Empty inside. Hurley? Oh, he's been like that ever, ever since he got back. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. I beg that you won't speak to me. Sorry? I don't know who you are, but kindly take your leave. As you can see, I'm not here. I, I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah, what the fuck, Mr. Sholmes? I do apologize. When he gets like this, he's completely oblivious to everything. Yes, I see. Really, he behaves just like a child sometimes. Hurley does. Mr. Sholmes and Iris have something of a parent and child relationship, don't they? Yes, except that Iris is clearly the parent here. Come to think of it, I wonder where her real parents are. What's the matter, Bruno? You have ever such a funny look on your face. Oh no, it's it, it's nothing. I know what it is. Why does this girl live here with Mr. Sholmes, you're wondering? Am I right? How how did you... Oh, Bruno, I can read you like a book. Uh, this girl is dangerous. <laughs> she is dangerous, shit. Don't worry, you can ask me anything. I won't mind. Why? Where are your parents? Are they dead? Did you eat your parents? Did you use your parents in an experiment? <laughs> So by Ginny, you mean Miss Lestrade, the young woman from the McGilded case two months ago, right? Yes, who also stole my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Although, after that trial, I invited her back here and we had dinner together. And now we're the best of friends. Oh, what a lovely tale. Yes. Now, if I bump into her on the street, she runs away as fast as she can. Oh. And I chase her down... And I chase her down the back alleys. Interesting idea of friendship. And then I let her have the latest color of smoke... Of smoke grenade I've... I've developed. Oh. That's encouraging it, though. There are so many beautiful colors... In, in the world. Ginny wants me to make a whole rainbow. I suppose this means you've let Miss Lestrade keep the smoke grenade launcher, have you? Yes, that's right. That's nice of you, though. I would got bored of it anyway. Hurley always reacts the same way when I shoot him with it now. Poor Hurley. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I can't wait for Ginny to arrive. It's been too long since she last came over. I'm so excited. I just hope she does actually come. This is interesting though. I'm actually in interested to see like what she's gonna do if she actually comes. I'm sure you've been wondering why it is that I live here with Hurley, haven't you? Well, it has crossed my mind. That and where are your real parents? My mommy and daddy aren't with me a a anymore. Mommy passed away when I was born. Okay, see, this is where the hard shit... Not Naruhodo, why Why are you so damn curious? Why? Now we gotta hear the mom died shit, dad got drunk and left her, and all the bullshit. Like, we're gonna go through all of that. Why did you have to ask? And at around the same time, my father... Well, he had to go to a faraway land because of one of the cases he and Hurley were working on. Oh. Wait a minute. Did you say he and Hurley? <clears throat> yes. Daddy and Hurley were always solving mysterious cases. Oh, so he's he's the real one in your stories. So I wouldn't be surprised if the guy in the stories is her father. 
She didn't mention that before. He he wrote them all up in in, in his diaries. That's what's in 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 the metal chest over there. Really? He recorded them all? So, you mean it's true? Mr. Sholmes really did have a partner with whom he tackled some of his most taxing cases? Oh, yes. I mean, it's always nice to have one, isn't it? So Mr. Sholmes' partner was your father? Exactly. Hurley told me I wasn't allowed to look in in the chest. But that only made me want to look even more, so I opened it up and found your father's m memoirs. <laughs> yeah, so I asked Hurley, who wrote these? He nearly fell off his chair. But then he told me that... But then he told me, that's when I found out that the author of all those accounts was my father. So Iris's father was Mr. Sholmes's partner. Okay, this is some interesting stuff. I practically lived with Hurley all my life. I was tiny when he took me in. So it came as quite a shock when Hurley told me he wasn't really my daddy, I mean. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. It must, it must have done. I wonder why Mr. Sholmes chose to tell you. And at such a young age. Hurley says it's because he wouldn't have been able to hide it from me. Oh? Well, having lived with Hurley all these years, you might say that his ways have rubbed off on me. There are some things I can just see. Especially lies. I almost know when people are, are lying before they open their mouths sometimes. Right. Anyway, I was so fascinated when I read... When I read... Daddy's Diaries. That's what inspired me to write the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, actually. I'd always assumed that Mr. Sholmes simply told you all those thrilling stories. Oh no, Hurley's hopeless like that. <laughs> he forgets everything. As soon as he saw the case, it all but vanishes from his mind. Oh, I see. The other day, it was so embarrassing. As usual, he totally forgot about the case he just solved. So, the very next day, he gathered together all the people involved and proceeded to solve the case again. It was quite a shock for everyone. You can say that again. You share your father's sur surname, don't you, Iris? That's right, Wilson. Daddy is Dr. John H. Wilson. See, I knew it. I learned from his diaries that he's, he, he's a doctor of medicine, you see. That's what prompted me to study and study so that I could earn a doctorate as well. Iris's father, who went to some distant lands, and is a doctor by the name of John H. Wilson. Hmm. The court will now hear the trial of Ryunosuke Naruhoto. Kindly say before the court the name of the victim in this case. The victim's name was Jock... He's dead. Iris, he died. <laughs> Iris, he died. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god, he died. Oh my fucking god. We, we, oh. Fuck. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Iris, I am so sorry. He's gone. He's dead. <laughs> he died in Japan. I am so sorry. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my. Oh fuck. Mm -mm. And you know what? That low key would kind of explain. 
why Mr. Sholmes was on that ship, technically, if he always traveled with his partner. Hui! Okay. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, and thank you so much for the raid, Yuki. I appreciate it. And hope you had an awesome, awesome stream. And everybody, please follow Yuki if you haven't followed her yet. <laughs> oh, God. And I hope you had a good session. Hope you had a really, really good session. But oh, my fucking God. That was the victim in the first case. He's dead. That's right. Visiting professor of medicine at Imperial Yume University. And the man who, in the most bizarre of circumstances, lost his life just before we left Japan. Holy fuck, man. Oh, I'm so close to affiliate. It, it ain't even funny. Ooh, oh, yes. Get that affiliate. Yes, dude. I believe. Just keep on the grind. Just keep going. <laughs> Iris, he's dead. <laughs> Miss Suzato. Are, are, are you going to tell her? Because I would tell her. Yes. Perhaps we shouldn't pursue this conversation any further at this time. No, perhaps we should pursue the conversation because you can't hide anything from Iris. Did you hear what the bitch said? You can't lie to her. She sees shit. She seen things. <laughs> we, we can't keep this from her. She will find out. I think that would be for the best. She, she's gonna find out. Eventually. <laughs> I legit had 2.8 average views when I- Ooh, uh, Oh, that's close! That is super close! Yes! Yes, keep going! Don't worry, you're- you're gonna like- I would give it like another month, and if you keep consistent like that for the next month, like, I feel like hands down guaranteed. You'll- you'll get that affiliate. Hands down. Hands down. Ah, oh, my dear fellows, how good to see you! I want to know Sholmes Barber, right? Right? For real? Oh, wait, wait. No, he's not wearing his outfit. I just realized. Mr. Sholmes. Oh, Mr. Sholmes. Uh, hello. Uh, <laughs> I like the the uh, the um, at-home daddy Sholmes. I, I like that. I don't like the going out daddy Sholmes. That is not a no. But I like the at-home Sholmes. Oh, and look, our backgrounds match. His wall is pink. My wall is pink. Oh, we, we are so, like, in tune, Mr. Sholmes. This is fate. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Whenever did you... <laughs> Why ever did you not make your presence known to me before? <laughs> well, no matter now. So how, how the devil are you? Yes, it is fate. Thank you. Someone is, well, you know what. <laughs> I call him Vest Sholmes when he's at home. Oh, God. You, you don't even know. <laughs> if you've seen my TikTok videos, then that'll un understand. <laughs> You'll understand. Well, no matter now. So how the devil are you? We've been with you for most of the day. Goodness, really? Do tell me, Mr. Sholmes, is your violin unscathed? Hmm, my violin. Whatever are, are you talking about, dear madame? Oh, um, never mind that now. I have something far more interesting to show you. Behold, my dear fellows. Oh, another music... That is that the second disc the guy was talking about? Another music box disc? No, not another disc, Miss Suzato. This is the one Gregson demanded we hand over as evidence. Mr. McGilded's disc. Oh, okay, so you, you you kept it. You stole it. Oh, my. Then, then what's it doing here? Mr. Sholmes. You know, at times, Mr. Naruho, though, I think that though I have an undeniable turn for detection, I may well even... I may well be even more adept to larceny. Or at larceny. Ooh, that would be wonderfully exciting. I'd be your pickpocketing assistant. And Runo could be our go-to lawyer if we ever got caught. Right. Plus, Susie has such a beautiful handwriting. She could write all our menacing crime no notifications. Yes, I'd be delighted. Suzato, I'm just going to pretend this conversation never happened, I think. <laughs> 
Oh my god. Okay, Mr. Sholmes, what the fuck are you doing with the disc, first of all? What? I met, I couldn't see your, your, your reaction live to you when he puts his boot on the table. <laughs> Oh god. Dude, no, but like, um, I was about to say, I sh it's it's a lot of work, but I'm trying to figure out a way to upload my Ace Attorney uploads so that they're like 30 minute sessions instead of like two whole ass hours. Um, but I, I have like an idea for it. Um, but, what was I about to say? Um, but yeah, like, it's a... Uh, you will see it on YouTube eventually. <laughs> you can at least experience it through there. <laughs> see, I don't understand. How did that disc come to be in your possession? I thought Inspector Gregson took it back to Scotland Yard. Quite correct. And that sort of uncompromising attitude is precisely why I always carry some of this. Caramel? That's a bar of caramel, Mr. Champ. He did not switch the disc with caramel. Your one and only friend in times of loneliness, if I'm not mistaken. If you will humor me, my dear fellows, cast your minds back to when the good detective confiscated the, the disc. I'll be taking whatever it is of Mr. of of McGilded's down to the yard. Thank you very much. So hand it over. Oh yes, of course. If the police demand something as evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to capitulate. It's all yours, Inspector. So what did you, how did you do? For the briefest of moments, I had the disc in my hand, did I not? Yes, yes you did. But I still don't understand. It was at precisely that moment that I summoned my one and only friend into action. Oh, you mean me? You can summon me. I can, I'll, I'll come anytime. <laughs> I pressed the disc. <laughs> into <laughs> I pressed the disc into a pair of bars like this. <laughs> Th that's amazing. Oh, uh, okay, that's actually smart. The disc and all the minuscule patricians have made an image on the caramel. Indeed, this caramel is quite exceptional. I developed it myself, you know. So suitably soft for making impressions but resistant to melting, the result of a precisely controlled solution. How extraordinary. Carrying a pair of these on one's person frequently proves very useful indeed. Take a house key for example, a simple press and its unique form is duplicated. I can enter anyone's property at will and never without high sucrose nourishment. Right. Yes, it sounds illegal. <laughs> From the image, I was able to create this. I confess, I was most curious to know what manner of music would issue from the disc when played. So can we, like, hear this? Because this is actually really interesting. Do tell us then, Mr. Sholmes, what music does the disc play? Well, unfortunately, I have no idea. No idea. None whatsoever. Can you play it for us? Are you familiar with the workings of a music box, my dear fellows? No, I'm afraid not. Goodness, you don't know, Bruno? What? Inside a music box, there's a special metal piece called a comb. That's what produces the sounds. Small Small... Protuberances pluck the different teeth of, of the comb as they rotate past it, making the different notes. Oy. The first mu music boxes to, to be invented use a rotating cylinder with protuberances on it. Can I just say people who make music box versions of songs are great? For real, that is not an easy thing. But over time, a new type of player was produced, which uses discs such as these. With that development, the popularity of, of music boxes fair, spread far and wide, all around the globe. Why, exactly? 
because the discs are easy to produce and can be interchanged to facilitate the playing of different tunes. There are a great many firms in Europe now manufacturing m music boxes as a result. It is wonderful to be able to enjoy music, even when no performer is present. But it is very... But it is the very success of the invention that means we are now presented with an insurmountable problem. What do you mean? As you may imagine, the construction of one's firm's m music box does not match that of another. And we have no way of knowing in which music box this particular disc was designed to be played. Someone did one for Rage Awaken from Kingdom Hearts in... They don't make any more. Oh, I remember, I, I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that. There is no resolution t to this problem, I I'm afraid. It's quite intractable. Ah, I see. So that's why. Naturally, I tested the disc in those few, in those few music boxes I have at my disposal. But as you can hear, to no avail. Ooh, that sounds garbage. The results were equally unsatisfactory in this one. So, what if it's like Morse code or something? I am presently engaged in acquiring an example of all of the, the, the music boxes ever made in Europe. A every single one? That's Hurley for you, always taking things too far. But my dear girl, an unsolved r riddle is quite repugnant to my constitution. But surely all the different types in Europe will amount to a huge volume of music boxes, won't it? Hmm, yes, that is certainly true. In the worst case, I shall just have to ask you to vacate the, the attic room. What? No, I want my space. The fuck? Get out of here. Magnus McGilded. Not a name I expect to hear again so soon. Yes, it's only been two months since that grisly case. Like, holy shit. Mr. McGilded perished within hours of the trial's conclusion. Hi, Van Zeeks. Was it the curse of the Reaper? No one knows still now. I want this image like high res for myself. <laughs> The omnibus was reduced to a pile of ash. Not a shred of evidence remains. And with the man's death, the truth about the murder in which he was so intimately involved was buried. Okay, bye Van Zeeks. Bye. <laughs> Even though we successfully established Mr. McGilded's innocence in, in the trial, the, news the newspapers are still claiming that it, it remains an unsolved case. Crispy Fried McGilded. <laughs> That's funny. We're about to solve this mystery case then. Shit. The murder of, of, of the brickmaker, Mr. Thrice Fired Mason. Mm hmm. In the end, the truth of the matter re remains a mystery. We still have no idea what, what really happened that night. Yeah, because Mr. McGilded got in the way. Motherfucker. And although Mr. McGilded was found not guilty through my defense, I still don't know if that was the right judgment or not. It wasn't. Hands down, that shit wasn't. It would appear the case is not yet closed. Oh, so we can take on the case? Well, it's time I started getting things ready for dinner, I think. Ginny will be here before long. Thank you, Iris. Oh, well, you must let me help you then. Of course, Susie. That's plen There's plenty to do. I think I shall investigate the condition of my fateful performing partner. Now then, where did I leave it? Let this be a lesson to you, Mr. Sholmes. Never leave anything too precious with the pawnbroker. He's, he's not going to remember. Hmm, yes, you may be right. He's, he's not going to remember. Oh, that reminds me. Of something Mr. Windermake said, said, said before. He said that he had a manuscript of ir of irises in in pawn. It in pawn, <laughs> didn't he? Did he? 
Yes, he definitely mentioned it. Mr. Sholm's latest tale of otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom, were his words, I believe. So you heard about that, did you? I expect you were as incest as I was. Oh, yes. The idea of such a wonderful story languishing in Mr. Windabank's storeroom gathering dust? My dear madame, I'm quite sure I, I, I told you already. The pawnbroker's storeroom is the safest place for it, more secure than a bank's vault. You sure? Because someone almost grabbed the stole a coat. And what about your Stradivarius, Hurley? Was that safe and secure? Well, there may be the occasional mix-up caused by a certain impetuous someone not too far from me now. <laughs> Do you have any idea how long it took me to write that, that Baskerville story, Hurley? Oh, it sounds so exciting. The Hound of the Baskervilles. I should love to read it. What? What happened? What? Did she say something wrong? Dot 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 dot. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on here? Why does it feel like an icy chill just swept through the room? Susie, what did you just say? Um, you said the hounds of the Bas of the Baskervilles. But how could you know the full title? Well, that's... You did not... Go in and read, Suzato. You did not! Suzato! That's because Miss Suzato is such a great fan of all the stories about Mr. Sholmes, of course. But Bruno, the Hound of the Baskervilles, has never been published. What? When I showed Hurley the manuscript, he told me that I wasn't allowed to publish it yet. I don't understand. That's why he said that he'd keep it safe. Until it was the right time for the story to be made public, you see. So that's why the manuscript is at Windbanks. And yet, how could Susie here know its title? Well, Hurley, what's going on? Is there is there something that I... Don't, don't, don't fucking deflect the, the situation. What is it, Mr. Sholmes? It would appear our guest has- Oh, you're gonna fucking deflect the situation! No! How does she know? Did you give her- Did you show her? Hmm? Did you- Did you woo- Woo her? And then- Or did she woo you? And then you fell for her oriental beauty? And then you showed her? Oh god, he deflected it. Jesus Christ. <sighs> Miss Lestrade! Hey, what's up? Get the fuck out. You're not welcome right now. <laughs> this was a bad idea. I knew I, I weren't welcome. I'm going. Okay, stay out. No, wait, Miss Lestrade! <laughs> We've all been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Haven't we, Iris? Yeah, okay, this is awkward. This is very awkward. Oh, yes, just just wait there, Ginny. <laughs> we'll have everything ready in a jiffy. All right, come along, Susie. Right, of course. It's a pleasure to see you here, Miss Estrada. Please, make yourself at home. All right. Don't stand in the door, my dear girl. Come along in. What say you... What say you to some Mendelssohn? I won't take no for an answer. I don't know what that is, but that sounds good. Meddlesome. It is, then. Oh, okay, never mind. He, mean, he meant meddlesome. <laughs> oh, look at the kitty. Hello. Wagai. Wagai. 
Wagahai? I guess that's how you say it. Meow. Me fucking ow. <laughs> that evening, Iris prepared us all a meal that was even more delicious than usual. Mr. Shulm's violin performance was in no way meddlesome. And Gina, as we came to call her, taught us all how to steal things from one another without being noticed. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves well into the night. Until... Ah, okay, what happened? 15th April, 9.34pm, Naruhodo's legal consultancy. That was a very enjoyable evening, wasn't it? Oh yes, Iris's cooking was truly divine. And I feel as though I can still hear the enchanting strains of Mr. Sholm's violin even now. Best of all, I bet I could steal the glasses from his lordship's face next time we're in court. Right. Naruhodo-san, could I consult with you about something? I wonder. What's the matter, Suzato-san? Oh, what's wrong? It's about the telegram I received. Oh, is she gonna tell us finally? The one that arrived first thing this morning, I suppose. Hmm? I've... I've been summoned. What? 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 Summoned? What do you mean? <clears throat> the telegram was from the Lord Chief Justice's office. Lord Strongheart has asked to see me- Don't go! Okay, I saw how I saw how Strongheart was looking at you. He wants your oriental bits. Don't go. <laughs> Don't go. He wants your oriental bits. Do not go. I smell danger. I don't trust Lord Strongheart. The Lord Chief Justice? When? Tomorrow morning. What? Then then we have to start preparing at once. Oh no, that won't be necessary, not Naruhodo-san. I've been summoned alone. Alone? What on earth for? I have no idea. I suppose I shall find out tomorrow. He wants your lady bits! Run! What's all this about? This is so weird. No, no, no. He... I think Mr. Strongheart has some oriental fever that he needs to get over because Suzato belongs to no goddamn Englishman. I'm sorry. Minus Sholmes. But she does not belong to no goddamn Englishman. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's making me feel very uneasy. Oh, who could that be, I, I wonder? Hello? Oh, hi, Iris. Good evening, friends. Ah, Iris, hello again. Oh, and Gina, hi. And Gina, too. Yes, Ginny is going to stay with us. T stay with us t t t t t tonight. God. <laughs> She's going to sleep in with me. Oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that right, Ginny? Well, yeah. Oh, they're so cute. How lovely. L let me make a pot of tea. That's so adorable. You know, I've learned so much today. Oh, what in particular how to steal? That's one. All those things Ginny showed us. Wasn't it wonderful? Uh, you mean all those pickpocketing techniques? We, we had fun trying them out on, on, on each other. Didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we did. I think I've awakened a natural talent. I could earn a living from it. No, no, no. You might be getting ahead of yourself a little here there. <laughs> so what brings you up to your to our humble quarters at this late hour? Well, you see, I came to return this. Wait, what? That's mine! Oh my, however did you I told you, didn't I? This fucking bitch needs to back off. What the fuck, Iris? I have a natural talent for it. Oh yes, I had forgotten. Iris literally is a child genius. So anyway, here, you can have it back. Not that I really uh, understand why you wear it though. Uh, thank you. All right then, good night. Yes, good night. Th thanks Iris for stealing my shit. What else did you steal? 
So this is your office, is it? <laughs> what do you think, Ginny? I think I wouldn't fancy me chances w with a lawyer what lives in, in, in a place like this. Yes, me too. Way to roast him, damn! It seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. I suppose. She probably wants to talk about the manuscript. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes, I, I, yes, I suppose she probably does. So about that manuscript... <laughs> Iris, I... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscripts, aren't you? This episode is just Rose Ryanosuke, the episode. Really? That's funny. <laughs> aren't you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. I, I, I need a little more time, please. Alright, I understand. I hope I haven't made you feel awkward. Oh no, not at all, Iris. Not at all. I don't know what this is all about, really, but... It's a story you, you made up. Is it, Iris? This mantle script, or whatever you call it. <laughs> That's funny. It's not exactly a story that I made up. It's something I read in Daddy's Diaries. Daddy's? That's right. I don't suppose I, I've mentioned it to you before, G G Jenny, but I have a mom and dad. I'm, I, I'm not just some random child genius that spawns out of thin air. <laughs> My daddy was Hurley's assistant one, assistant once, his partner. Yep, yep. They solved all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. Is that right, Mister? Apparently so. I was as surprised as you are, though. And Daddy wrote all the details of every single case down, you see, in his diaries. So I study them and write my stories based on what actually happened. So where's your old man now then? He had to go away on urgent business to a faraway land and he'll be gone a very long time. He's... He's gone forever. Like... He's, he's gone, gone. So, I've never really met him. Oh, and that's the worst. She never met him either. Oof, that, that is the worst. That is the worst. Oh, right. Come to think of it. I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her. Oh, so are we just going to pry into everyone's personal lives now? Jesus. Iris, this hound of, of the Baskerville story, I take it that it's another tale inspired by your, your father's accounts? That's right. I thought it was fascinating. But it's different somehow. From the, the other cases, I mean. Oh, how? I don't really know, but it must be special in some way. Because after I'd written it and I showed the manuscript to Hurley... He turned as white as a sheet. It was the first time I've ever seen him like that. It pains me to have to say this after you've toiled over it for so long, Iris. But this story must not be published at this time, under any circumstances. But why not? It's one of my best works! I'm not at liberty to say, not now, so please do not ask me. When Sholmes is serious, he's serious. All right, then. I won't. But I do solemnly swear that I will explain everything one day, Iris, when the time is right. And that's how the manuscript came to be with Mr. Windebank, isn't it? Yes. Hurley said it had to be somewhere very safe. That really gets my goat, that does. He's treating you like a child. It's mean, that's what it is, keeping secrets like that. I'm sure Mr. Sholmes isn't trying to be mean. If he said he wasn't 
at liberty to, to talk about it, I'm sure there must have been a very good reason. I think so too. Yeah, you probably because you probably fucking read it. <laughs> you lot were you lot are true trusting for your own good. But he can't pull the wool over my eyes. Sholmes is lying to Iris. I bet my life on it. What? Hurley's lying to me? Nah, 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 nah. He's just bad with people. That's all it is. It's not Ace Attorney unless you get into everyone's personal lives. Just that, oh yeah, Maya is like always all up in people's spaces. It's like, Maya, like, you barely know the person. Like, please. So what about your parents? I realize that I don't know anything about your parents, a G a G parents, Gina. Oh, and it's okay. Uh, Shriek Ogre, I have to leave. Sadly, good night. Good night, and I hope you have an awesome night. Sleep well. But I will be live streaming tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So you can go ahead and check check me out again tomorrow. Um, but yeah, take care. <laughs> See, I realize that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. I ain't got any, have I? Neither... Neither did I... N neither... So you, so, so you don't have parents. <laughs> God. Oh. Look, the East End's full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to, to do with us from the minute we're born. Not even our moms. Well, that's depressing. But we all stick, we all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones. Just say the older ones look after the little ones and make sure they get by. That's all you have to say. Little ones. Why do you have to put little ones? <laughs> so that's why you're a pickpocket. I mean, yeah, how is she, is she gonna make money for the tiny ones? Nah, diving's my life. I love it. Oh, okay, never mind. I get a kick out of it every time I, I lift some pompous, some pompous idiot's purse. And that's how we all we all afford to eat i'm like robin hood ain't i that's how i see it you're no <laughs> oh gina i do think about it sometimes would it be like to have parents i mean i always thought it'd make everything right but haven't listened to what iris just said it sounds like having parents ain't always easy either oh I mean, if you know you never had them, you don't feel like you're always wanting to meet them. I guess. It's true. I guess that's that's a different spectrum, yeah. That is true. I do want to see Daddy so much. I can show you his grave. That is the best I can do for you, Iris. I'm so sorry. Oh, Iris. <sighs> okay, what's Sholmes' lie? Gina, what did you mean when you said that you know Mr. Sholmes is lying to Iris? Well, he reckons he he popped that mantle script or whatever, right? But come on, that's obviously a load of rubbish. Oh my, well, why would you think that, Gina? It's simple. If that story was really an old Windabank storeroom... There's no way someone from halfway around the world, in other words, you, could know about it. Oh! Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you. But Hurley would never do something like that. I'm sure of it. Ha. Grown-ups do a lot worse than that, believe me. Bare-faced liars. The lot of them. You just ain't realized it yet. I mean, you're about to be a grown-up soon, shit. I'm telling you, that mental script ain't at Windabanks. You'd soon see if you if you had a look. Even if you think you can trust them, I don't. That Sholmes is a liar like the rest of them. If I'm honest, I have wondered if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. See? 
Oh, but I, I, I don't mean that I, I think he sold it. I mean that I sometimes wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Don't be too hard on yourself, Iris. It's okay. Oh my goodness, look at the time. Come along, come along, Ginny. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, all right. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> and please don't mention any of this to Hurley, will you? No, of course not. Good night then, Iris. Good night, Gina. You must you must let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist. It's going to be a classic Japanese breakfast. We're going to have the sardines with rice and miso soup. It's going to be great. Oh, yes, please. I can't wait, Susie. Good night, then. Iris, it sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she speaks just like an adult. But deep down, she's still just a child. Well, I think it's time that I turned in for the night, too. Naruhoto-san. I'm so curious, though. Like, what does Lockhart want with... Sizato? Dr. John H. Wilson, Iris's father. But also, the name of the murdered visiting professor at Yumi University. Aw, uh, Bounty Bind, thank you so much for the follow, I appreciate it. It can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. Hmm. I am very curious at what's going on. Mr. Naruhodo. Mr. Naruhodo. That voice. That's Mr. Sholmes. Hello? Oh, good morning. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, never mind. Oh, hello. Good. Good evening. Why are you waking me up in the middle of the night? I thought it was morning. My bad. <laughs> What's going on? It's the middle of the night. It's Miss Lestrade. She's gone. Gina? She was supposed to be sleeping in Iris's room, but her bed is empty. Well, she's an independent young woman. She probably decided to go home, no? The disc is gone, probably. I think not. From speaking to her before, she retired. I received the distinct impression that she was looking forward to breakfast with Miss Sizato. No, I don't believe the girl has gone home, but I've been waiting over an hour now. Over an hour? Oh. If you'll indulge me. Look out of the window, my dear fellow. What's this about? Wait a minute, why is there a light on at this time of night? That's Mr. Windebank's pawnbrokery. Mr. Windebank's? Oh no. It's simple, if, if that story was really an old Windebank storeroom, there's no way someone from halfway around the world, in other words, you, could know about it. Oh boy. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you. Could Gina have gone? It seems you have some knowledge of, of the situation, Mr. Naruhodo. Sorry? Oh, no. N no, not really. Well, anyway, we must investigate. At once. Mrs. Otto. What the fuck is going on? All right, so I hate to end this early, but this is actually a very good spot to stop for stream. Oh, I'm running out of save slots. <laughs> well, that's fine. I tend to save a lot on these things. But anyways, but this is a good spot to end stream, um, mainly because I don't want to like stop at like what do you mean, do not end here, please? Oh my god, okay. You know what? You know, okay. You know what, chat? 
Do you want me to keep going? Hmm? Do you want me to keep going? One for yes, two for no. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Because I just thought it would be a good spot to end here. Because it's almost close to time. I could probably go another like 10, 15 minutes. And then I gotta really go because I have pack schedule. Like, I gotta do some stuff and then get ready for work. <laughs> get ready for bed for work. Okay, fine. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Okay, we got this. We got this. We need a little stretch. Okay, we got this. We got this. Okay, fine. 16th April, 1.14 a.m. Baker Street. The door to Windabanks, it's open. And the lamp is burning. It must be Gina, mustn't it? Let us hope it's nothing more sinister. What? Come, there's not a moment to lose. Clearly something is afoot inside. All right. I see blood. Um, there's there there's no, there's blood. There's no one here. Oh yes, there is. Mr. Sholmes! What the- Has Sholmes been shot? Leave me, Mr. Narohodo. But- I, I, After them, go! Right. Blast! I've lost them. Hello? Hello? Oh, 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 what have we here? The alarm just raised from this pawnbroker, sir. Would you know something about that? Officer, come with me. It's my friend, M Mr. Sholmes. He's been shot. Shot? What the fuck is going on? What the fuck? With the policeman close behind me, I ran back to Windabanks. Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Narado! How bad is it? Uh, never mind me, but there's much at stake. Behind that door. Uh, uh, In the storeroom. Uh, hurry! Um, so that, that happened, um, so, um, this is going to be a locked room case, 
and it is going to be the most annoying case and i can feel it and 100 percent they're gonna be like gina's the one who did it she's the one who killed them and then she's gonna we're gonna be defending her and then we're gonna uncover some bullshit truth about what the fuck is going on okay yes that that was a good spot to end thank you for encouraging me to keep going um i that i okay anyways thank you so much for dropping by i appreciate it (laughs) oh god i appreciate it but now i can properly end (laughs) but wow 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 that is something that is that's something anyways Thank you guys so much for dropping by. I appreciate it. Tomorrow we will continue and see what happens. See what's going on in this case. This is... This is going to be interesting. This case is going to be interesting. I already feel it, but like... It's going to be annoying, but interesting at the same time. But anyways. Hi. If you haven't followed my social medias, please, please follow those. Um, Those links that my moderator graciously linked for all of you guys to check out. Um, I am going to plan on having just one whole ass link to put on there so you guys can just access one link for everything instead of like all of these. (laughs) So, um, but yeah, other than that, I will see you guys later. Have an awesome night and hopefully I can see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.